know, I've thought a lot about this before, and um, I was just scrolling through my emails today, and I saw that I got a follower on Vimeo called Channel Evan. So I watched the one video he had on Vimeo, and it was called, um, like, The Eyes of a Child via Cartoons or something like that. And basically what he did was he took all of these different um, cartoon clips and he mashed them together with like certain uh, black texts that just said, you know, this thing. And then it showed like a clip from Pepper Ann or whatever. It was great. Um, and, I, and I got to thinking about that. Well, what, what else has this guy done? So at the end of the video, it showed like his Tumblr, his... Um, you know, his Twitter, whatever, so I go on his Twitter, and I follow that, and then I find out, oh, he has a YouTube channel, so, I go to his YouTube channel, and when I go there, I, I see how he has all these different videos, he's got other, like, um, cartoon compilations, and some weird, like, commentaries, but just through text, and I thought, wow, this guy really has a sense of aesthetic, you know, he's only got, like, 250 something subscribers but he really has an atmosphere when it, within his videos and it's weird they feel almost like a mashup of YouTube poops which have a very specific aesthetic whenever you look at them uh, through the thumbnail or just by watching them and uh, cartoon compilation videos like I said he takes elements from that and, um, the other one was, uh, crap, what else does he remind me of? Uh, just that kind of, uh, well, he uses black, a uh, black wall and then white text, so he kind of reminds me of those old, like, uh, videos on YouTube from, like, 2008, etc., when they would just take the, the text and they'd put it there. Um, from the editor and then they just show certain amount of footage and then just do whatever and it, you know it definitely reminds me of that but it has this weird edited YouTube feel while also feeling like a person even though it's almost completely disconnected from whoever that person is so I don't know it's a really cool aesthetic and I liked it a lot and I thought about, well, you know, I've thought about the aesthetic of YouTubers, and I've tried to master my aesthetic, and I've done terribly at it. If you go on my main channel, I do not like the aesthetic I've put on with those videos. There's no mystery in it. I've shown you a lot of the games that I have. Um, it's just kind of... It's, it's not what I want. Like, there wasn't a lot of thought behind it. And, um, that's just not the kind of atmosphere I wanted to put within my videos, which took, it took me a while to develop that sense of atmosphere. But in these new videos that are going to be coming up, you're really going to understand that sense of atmosphere, I hope. But, I mean, just to kind of describe what I have going, it just feels like a lot of reds and a lot of pinks and, and like the, none of the thumbnails look appealing and, one day, I just sat there and I was like, do, do I want to privatize all these videos? Then I thought, well, they can trace back, you know, where my channel started and stuff, so I guess I'll just leave it the way it is, but that channel, trust me, it's going to get an entire new makeover, like, the, the channel banner is going to change, um, the icon might change, I don't know, I might keep it at the cat because I like the cat um the freaking um uh, crap oh the thumbnails are definitely gonna change like I'm gonna try to have um more mysterious thumbnails but others just like you know it's the regular OC in the thumbnail that kind of thing um but others that are like more kind of hey what the heck is that um so yeah, and I think the thumbnail is is important, not exactly vindicative, but it's important to how you perceive the video as a whole. And the channel layout itself is um, a very important to the uh, aesthetic persona, if you will, of the channel. 
And I go and I look on my own channel and I'm like, you know, this aesthetic isn't good. I click on a video, uh, it's like I just don't like it. Um, I know other people will go and say, yeah, it's genuine. You know, it's very, it's definitely genuine, but it's, it's just, I don't know, it's not what I really wanted. So, um, I, I do want it to be genuine, just in a more artsy form, I guess. But, um, let's see. And I was thinking of another channel, like uh, Bio Phoenix. He has a very distinct sense of atmosphere within his videos. They feel like very silly, photoshopped, while also that kind of laid back you know, talking, it's almost like in a dark room, it feels like he's sitting there talking in a dark room, um, about some weird, obscure game, that's the, the obscure games and the fact that, you know, he feels elevated to talk about these is one of the things that makes Bio Phoenix aesthetic so good, um, but the main YouTuber I talk about, or the main two that I talk about, when I really want to talk about a, the sense of aesthetic is uh one rebel taxi and two the avgn specifically the avgn videos circa 2006 around that time those had the best sense of atmosphere i think the new ones kind of miss out on a little bit of what made the avgn special because he's on a freaking flat screen tv you know the, he's missing the point Except, I guess, you could argue, well, the continuity's changed, it's ten years into the future, so he has, he has, um, a, a flat screen TV, and he did kind of work that in, into the story, but still, you know, it just doesn't feel right when I've watched all these old AVGN videos, you know, from the, uh, 2004 to 2009 era, it just doesn't feel right to me. He should record on a VHS camera, to be completely honest, but that wouldn't get him views. Um, okay, so you go back to the AVGN. What was special about the AVGN aesthetic? I almost said spastetic. Um, so, I think what made it so special was it was like you were in the room with him, and it had that childlike kind of atmosphere, because just the quality of the camera feel, makes it feel like, um, like, uh, an old, um, VHS recording, you know, he's playing these Nintendo games on an original CRT, he's playing them on the original hardware, um, you know, he always cuts to, like, him in his living room making these comments, and they're not, like, official game critiques, like, it's not analysis, he makes these comments in a reviewing kind of fashion, but almost like a more scripted discussion kind of way, while also cracking jokes. And it gives off that atmosphere of just, you know, sitting down in the basement with your friends and playing video games. That's exactly how it feels. And, um, you know, it's, it's the writing of the videos, um, the, the way the thumbnails are, and just the way everything's laid out, you know, the hardwood floor, um, the kind of camera he's using, it just all fits in so perfectly. And it gives you that really nostalgic um, atmosphere. Uh, it makes you feel like you're in that time. And that's probably why so many gamers connected with that channel. Um, I just kind of gravitated to it because, yeah, it's an interesting aesthetic and he's funny and... Um, you know, the reviews are really done well, but I think for the more nostalgic crowd, yeah, that's totally, um, it would mean something to him, to them, but for me, it's just like, oh, this is that time, so, uh, I think it's interesting from, like, uh, an explorative perspective, but not, um, not in a nostalgic perspective, other than, like, the, the objective kind of nostalgia, where you weren't exactly there, but you get it, um, you, so you can empathize with those people, but, um, let's see, what was I gonna say?
I'm sorry, it takes me a while to figure these things out. But I think one of the the things that was so great about his channel was was um just the way not not just the aesthetic, but these games really meant something to him, you know. They the way he talked about them in this nostalgic manner, like he had a purpose behind the review. The reviews meant something. It wasn't just that he found a certain weird game, but if he did, he really made a good joke out of it, or um, he made a good atmosphere out of it, but a lot of the time it was just a game that he had some nostalgia for, or that there was some interesting pretense behind it, and that really carried the review well, and went with the overall aesthetic of it. Um, kind of feeding into that nostalgic aspect and the re relatability uh, between people of that generation. But, um, and the thing with, with Pan Pizza, like, he really comes off as Toonami, um, but more edited and uh, more blue. I, that's the only way I can explain it, more blue. Um, because he said in multiple podcasts, he said on other people's podcasts how much he was influenced by Toonami, and his Toonami retrospective is one of the best videos he did, even if it's old, it's one of the best videos he did, um, and because there's a lot of heart in it, and, you know, the jokes are still, are still pretty funny, I always like the, hurry up, Goku, Jesus Christ, <laughs> um, but yeah, have you watched Dragon Ball Z now? It takes forever, but, um, oh, you should watch that video, it's, it's so good, but, um, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm not looking at the camera, it's like I'm thinking about so many different things, just looking all over the room, but, um, these vlogs can be quite hectic with the thoughts, and I don't usually point it at myself, so you don't normally see me making all these weird faces and looking around, so it, it may seem a little strange, but, um, let's see, if I wore sunglasses or something, I'd look like a hipster, but it would, um, be less distracting and make the thumbnail look better, um, it's part of why Digi's Digi's vlogs look so well from a thumbnail standpoint because, you know, YouTube can just go to any random thumbnail and pick it and it doesn't look weird because he doesn't turn his head too much and he's always got those glasses on so he's not moving his eyes a weird way or at least it can't pick it up. But, um, so what Pan does is, uh, he, he goes for this like he's in a spaceship and it's very similar to, you know, Tom. He would just sit up there and watch call cartoons all day in his spaceship. And, um, it, it kind of gives you, I don't want to say like home setting of watching cartoons because it doesn't. But it's just so reminiscent of Toonami that it does anyway. But not in like a wood grain kind of way. Um, but it kind of reminds me of that. But everything from the montages that he does to the space age atmosphere to the stars like aesthetic that he has coming off in the background where you see like the footage is here and the stars are here and just the way he commentates over it like his voice delivers it so well it somehow his voice just goes well with the stars like I wouldn't have it any other way um, and the montages just Everything he does in editing is so reminiscent of Toonami, and it creates such a great atmosphere of that kind of, that blue glow, in a sense. Oh, I'm about to get to the blue glow, actually, that comes off of the TV when you're watching cartoons late at night. But, I, I mean, I could talk about Pan all day long about why his videos are freaking amazing, but um, I want to write an entire video about that because it's just... Such an amazing channel. Rebel Taxi, just look it up if you haven't watched it. It's an amazing, amazing channel. So funny. Great sense of aesthetic, but... Um, 
the other great thing is you get to see his animated character, but in a more subtle way. Like, everything about the atmosphere of his videos just screams subtlety. And if you watch him more than once, which I do, I've watched all of his videos, like, 20 times, without a doubt. I, I'd say that from an editing standpoint alone and a delivery standpoint, his videos, I regard them as high art. Which, you know, YouTube is art, but, like, his videos I put, like, you know, as uh, Van Gogh paintings. Um, because they're just so beautifully edited and beautifully crafted, and you can tell he loves this craft. But, um, you know, everything about it just screams subtlety, and that's great. And there's certain references that you have to get over multiple viewings, and, you know, things that people don't tend to appreciate and there's so much more production in it from a from like a typical web video I really wish I could support him on patreon but I don't got no freaking money all I can do is just give him ads by watching his videos a hundred times uh, and not use ad block screw ad block but anyway yeah I'll probably write a video or at the very least a blog post why he's so great um, but a Let's Play channel that I want to talk about that has a great sense of aesthetic is the Blue Glow, uh, Endless Jess's Let's Play channel. Um, just from the name alone and the cover art, you know, the cover art has this guy late at night playing video games um, on his couch. The place is kind of messy, and that blue glow from the television is just illuminating onto him as he plays. He looks kind of dirty. And the entire name, The Blue Glow, it is atmospheric in itself and it's just genius because, you know, it's the blue glow coming off of the TV. You get that image in your head without even looking at his cover art that, yeah, you know, you're playing video games late at night. It's a nostalgic kind of setting. And it's great. It's perfect for a Let's Play show. Because that is the exact atmosphere of a Let's Play. And it's it's great. Um, yeah, not much more I can say about that. I've only been watching the Blue Glow a little bit lately. The Tomb Raider ones are fantastic. The Tony Hawk one, I watched part of that. Um, mostly just the Radcon stuff that, you know, he did with Hippocrate and Digibro in them. But, um... Yeah, so those are just some fine examples of, like, good aesthetics. I mean, I could go on and on all day about these little details that I notice on, on YouTube that I don't think very many people notice or um, they just take them for granted. You know, I tend to notice things that people don't, but, um, I mean, there really should be more appreciation and more appropriation for the aesthetics of everyone's videos and I like what I have going with these vlogs I like how I'm doing them and I like the way they look on this graveyard shift channel but as time goes on I want to grow the atmosphere of the videos on the main channel um, if you watch the testing camera angles video I explain that far better there because uh, I'm not going to get into a big diatribe about that here. You can just go check out that video. But yeah, so next time you watch a video on YouTube, think a little bit more about the person behind the camera. Think about what they thought when they went into every little detail. Maybe it's something as small as, you know, what thing is in the background um, or a certain sentence or something as little as the thumbnail. Just think about the setting. Think about... Just think more about the media you consume in general, I guess. I don't know. I appreciate y'all watching, and I'll make another one of these if I have more to say. And I'm in the sister's room today. I forgot about to tell you that. I Every time I'm in her room, I always have to say... Hey, I'm in the sister's room, but this took way longer than expected, but it's good to have a long vlog out. See ya.